Hello, everybody. Welcome back to DSL Hearthstone Legendary Series. My name is Ozma Kitty. Once again, joined by Gree Torp. We just got done watching a pretty exciting series uh, between Cross and Strife Crow. Strife Crow eventually won, so he's going to move on to the semifinals. But before that, we have Chacky, the big sock Chack, versus Lead Paint. Oh, sorry, versus GCT Terth. Sorry, right, man. Uh, GCT Terth, as I was saying before, placed second in the Hearthstone Legendary Series previous to this, so he was just shy of being able to qualify. He did get seeding into this Redemption Tournament, as you can see, so he didn't have to go through a best of five, and he only has to go through two best of fives to make it all the way to the finals, being held here June 5th to June 7th with a $25,000 prize pool. Indeed. And GCT Terth, of course... Uh, it's the first time we're going to be seeing him today, so I'll give you guys a little rundown Please of his do. performance. Uh, he participated in week one, like you mentioned. Took second, like you mentioned. His total game score was 10 and 10. Okay. So he, he actually played a lot of matches that day. Yeah. Uh, most of his matches were 3 2. They went to all game five. But he had a really pr impressive performance, and he actually ended up losing um, in the semifinals to Life Coach, who ended up winning the whole thing. So he has to be really happy about his performance. GCT Turret is also a player who we saw in the Legendary Series Season 1. Uh, in one of the weeks, I believe he actually made it to the match day, which was actually really tough to do last season because you had to play something ridiculous like 20 best of fives in order to make it to the Legendary wow. Series match day if you came from the Open. And he's a player that prides himself in his ability um, to play well in qualifiers. And he plays in almost every single qualifier that he can get his hands on. Um, Man, qualifier stages are just grueling. The yeah. amount of, like, I would say... Just your brain power needs to be so, or your more like your brain stamina and dexterity, like, because yeah. you do start to fatigue after thinking about turns for so long, after staring at a monitor for, you know, six to ten hours. Things get out of hand very quickly. So for him to go through all those and actually embrace it, uh, it shows you just a level of capabilities. You know. Yeah. We always talk about that. Uh, we'll see, though, because obviously he's had a pretty easy run so far, having not had to play at all today. This is his first time, and uh, he's going to be up against Chucky. Now, we have seen Chucky before. How would you rate his play? 10 out of 10. 8 out of 8, mate. It's great. That's what Chucky would tell you. Chucky is a living, walking, breathing meme. The meme lord, the self proclaimed Proclaimed meme lord of the Hearthstone scene. Mm. I heard um, you were actually talking to me about him beforehand. Yeah. You're saying how aggressively he's coming to the the table here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you didn't even you didn't get to cast the matches. I didn't, I didn't get the yeah. I didn't get to catch him. But Chucky, uh, when he first started to appear on the scene, uh, he actually got his start back in. The ESL King of the Hill days, the NESL King of the Hill days, long ago, uh, about a year ago, um, where he actually defeated Raynad. There was a, a big controversy because Chucky proceeded to BM Raynad endlessly uh, in the match that he beat him in in the King of the Hill series. And he got a reputation for sort of being a, a BM player that played really BM decks or really aggressive decks. Um, and he actually broke that mold a while ago. Uh, when he started to play a lot of Freeze Mage, played Fatigue Mage. He was one of the players to sort of pinpoint some um, inconsistencies with, um, like, Conquest Format mm -hmm. and uh, how people can uh, capitalize on Conquest Format. Does that have something to do with the cycle of the meta in which he knows Upper. of his opponents knowing about him? Or is that uh, a situation where he's just trying to break that mold, do you think? And say, uh, well, hey. he wants. To, he doesn't want to be a predictable player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the his actual legendary series week, he brought a good mix of decks. Uh, but this week, he sort of hinted at me last night that he was going to be bringing all aggressive decks, and that's exactly what he did. Yep. And GCT Turth, on the other hand, he told me when I talked to him, it was a long time ago. It was before week one, so almost two months ago. He likes to play the the underrated decks. He likes to play the underdog decks. He likes to play Shaman, which we saw him bring in his legendary series mm -hmm. week. And uh, we, he loves playing Priest. Uh, in Legendary Series Season 1, he brought Priest, uh, mm -hmm. even though it was more standard to bring Priest back then. Um, bringing it today is, a, is sort of bold. And he's actually teched this thing pretty interestingly. He's got Double Sended Shield Master, Prophet Velen. 
Big strides. That's right, man. Prophet Velen. Does that mean he has Mind Blasts in here, too? It's possible. Um, one of the most popular priest players in the European ladder, um, uh, Zedalot, he has been playing a whole lot of Velen Priest lately. Interesting. And he does put Mind Blast in there. You know, the reason why I think it's so interesting is because, like, Mind Blast is such a single-purpose type of thing, and a lot of times it's just, like, a dud draw that you get. Yeah. And I feel like Priest does take a little bit to actually start getting their draw mechanics going, right? Like, it's such a... It, it's always, like, a one or... It's a one-turn explosive draw, or it's two turns where you have to get, you know, your, ac your Norshire Cleric out, yeah. or... Rather, you get your, your minions out, and then you get your Northshire, then you find a heal mechanic, and you're able to go. But normally, it's a lot of setup. They can deny that. They know what type of game you're playing, et cetera, et cetera. So I do feel like, um, you know, going for... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm also looking at the game. But going for something like this Velen uh, against a Hunter is... A little bit slow to the draw, but he really hasn't drawn into this Mind Blast, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, Velton is also just a strong card in general. Um, BGH isn't... Well, no, I don't know. A couple weeks ago, I would have said, okay, well, or like a week ago, I would have said, okay, BGH isn't as popular, so you're not as punished. But now BGH is even more popular yeah. because of Handlock. Yeah. A lot of decks that would normally run BGH are even taking in two. Like, Handlocks, oh, in yeah. order to counter the mirror, are putting in two BGHs. A lot of Control Warriors are putting in two BGHs. But Velen is a card where you also get the a double effect of your healing power, so it can make you able to stabilize. That's true. Uh, so, oh, I mean, we can probably get back to the the choices here. Vol'jin seems pretty good. He could Vol'jin the uh, Lothep here and uh, it, be able to trade into it. But uh, would he actually trade into the yeah the <coughs> Leper Gnome? Oh yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Of course. Although there still is, as we can see, a um, way to deal with that. And he has two ways, but I'm sure there's one more efficient way, which is the Eagle Horn Bow. Actually, he takes his Eagle Horn, trades in, and then goes for face here? I mean, you have to go for face. What am I talking about? Yeah. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like the, the Arcane Golem. Mm, probably not. This is a super it aggressive is hunter deck. This is a... Uh, um, Chucky was one of the is one of the players who innovates with the hunter decks the most. Uh, he was the first player to at least publicly, in a competitive environment, put Worgen Infiltrators in a face hunter deck, and that was actually at the Legendary Series Season One Land Finals where he took second place. And um, he's just sort of been on the forefront of um, the evolution of aggro. But right now he's kind of screwed. Yeah, not looking too good. Well, he has another two damage right there. He won't be able to spend his curve exactly unless he wants to drop the Mad Scientist. Well, actually, no. What? This isn't too bad just because he might be in a situation where he can race because GCT Turret doesn't have a... Well, it's a, he might have burst, but he doesn't have... Uh, he can't heal anymore. Yeah. Because how can I Soul Priest? So he can just start piling on the damage, try and draw into lethal That's the true, following man. turn. Actually, no, he's almost guaranteed lethal. Uh, he has the Life Bomb here. Yeah, he has to. He has no choice. Because Warkin Infiltrator, Arcane Golem, and Hero Power now lethal. I didn't realize how low a GCT Turret mm. was getting. It felt like he had a lot of control. If he uses Cabal Shadow Priest here, he's dead. So we know the, the correct play is Light Bomb. But it's so hard to actually say, like, that is the correct play. A lot of times well, you're actually thinking you're alive here. Yeah. Hey, wow! And there it is. I was actually considering, does he actually go for the trade light bombs? But it doesn't really matter. That's crazy! And uh, it looks like that's going to be it. Even though the Alcanine exactly. Soul Priest was a great way to trade with the low theft, it sort of doomed him. Um, I, there just wasn't much that he could do. I, it was it's such a weird situation where I felt like GCT Turth had such a great hold on the early game. Um, he had the Northshire Cleric for turn one. He was able to stabilize pretty well. Had that Vol'jin to be able to uh, trade effectively into the Lothep. But he just took so much damage in the process. Do you think the big thing was, you know, we went back to, well, I was saying before that, you know, the Ascension Shieldmaster traded into the Leper Gnome. Should it actually have just traded into, you know, the five attack damage Lothep? Because a lot of times you could count on 
hunters being able to break that taunt and just going directly for face for de five damage. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, it might be more effective just to do that. I think the the Vulcan play was pretty obvious, but I think that's why he took so long to figure out that turn was because he was thinking. Uh, killing off the Lepernone there is a huge value play. Yeah. It's kind of hard to, especially with a two damage weapon equipped, it's kind of hard to put a hunter on having Eagle Horn Bow or Quick Shot, which would the only, be the only two ways that he wouldn't be able to trade in that situation. Um, you, you sort of have to go for those greedy or more value plays if okay. you're going to want to come out at the end of the day. Okay. So I don't really blame him for trading into the Leper Gnome. Um, the, trading into Loth that would just have been a really, really like s super safe play, which it might have been the play to prevent him from um, losing as fast, but it wouldn't have been the play that would have allowed him to win the game because he would have wanted to preserve the damage that he had on the board. So, because I was also thinking, like based on the hand, your win condition will just be to outlast and play that um, just um, attrition game. You know, you have yeah. you have your seven drop seven seven uh, Velen, and as soon as you drop that on you know not a clear board but a board that's yeah. kind of maintainable, you know, turn eight. You heal for four, at least, given what your cards are. You know, turn nine, you heal for four again. Like, you're able to heal up pretty fast there. And let's say, you know, hunters are on average dealing anywhere from, let's say, four, f four damage to ten damage, I would say, at that stage. I mean, you're reducing the percentage that they're actually yeah. dealing. I mean, we're, I'm just going into theoretics at this point and finding out situations. But, again, I, I know there are those statistic miners out there that actually can figure out the answer. Not statistic majors. Well, when I say miners, I mean like my data mining. Oh, okay, okay. Not like... I thought you meant like... No, no. I was like, that's a really weird... <laughs> like you, it, you they, said... Yeah. It, oh, it's obvious that statistics no, I, majors I, can figure it out. I but. actually meant 10-year-olds. So yeah. <laughs> that's actually what okay. I meant. <laughs> well, you don't have to be 10 to be a miner. <laughs> okay, we're already jumping in the game and... Um, it's one thing that we didn't point out is for GCT Turret, he's in India. It's actually almost 5 a.m. in India right moly. now. It's 4:50 a.m. in India right now. So it's prime time for a nerd. <laughs> yeah. So well, he's he's as awake as he possibly could be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like oh, it's it's like four o'clock over here in uh, uh, in California. <laughs> this is actually when Chucky's usually waking up. <laughs> so he's actually in a worse off position than I GCT know, Turret. Man. He's like, man, I haven't even had breakfast yet. No, I think Chalky's actually on the East Coast. He might be in o Ohio or one of the north, north Midwestern uh, states. So probably a little bit later in the day for him. Hey. But I uh, just thought I'd point that out. GCT Turth is a uh, tournament veteran. And a lot of the tournaments are like NA based, a lot of the qualifiers. So um, he's probably experienced weird sleep schedules before. But it's also good to point out that it's 5 a.m. where he is almost. So it's control here. Very interesting. Uh, obviously, GCT Turth is kind of mixing it up. We were talking about how um, just the popularity of other warriors having that Grim Patron just gives the capabilities of being able to deal with that very effectively. On the other side, we have pretty standard zoo. Seems like it. Old school zoo almost. Well, you'd think it'd be pretty standard zoo by the cards, but um, we, uh, uh, this deck was played earlier by Chalky, and it's actually a very fast zoo. Uh, he runs Arcane Golems as well. Oh, wow. He doesn't top out very high. Uh, he runs Soul Fires and Dark Bomb. Wow. So it's basically just a face zoo, is what it, it comes down to be. All his decks, all of Chalky's decks are basically just face decks. Okay. It's like, oh, okay. Go face with this, go face with that. Um, Skill decks. It just so happens that GCT Turret has the... Wow. The right responses. Yeah. And wow. I mean, this isn't that hard for Warriors. Fireworks, no. Cool Taskmaster are not rare, and GCT but, Turret, the rest of his hand is actually quite weak. But even look at his turn four. It's not the absolute worst for a lot of the things. Wow! <laughs> How brutal. But it's not really the worst. I mean, look, he has Armor Smith and Fire War Axe for a lot of the different things that could have popped up here. I think yep. that still is probably the play. Uh, the other option is very clearly to Big Game Hunter. You could Armor Smith, Armor Up. But I think just loading your Fire War Axe is probably a lot more important. 
Chalky is unfazed. Wow, he actually armors up. So why why armor up here when you could load your fiery war axe? Well, fi seems... fiery war axe, you d you don't want to make him. Fireworks can sometimes make the warlock play um, oh, inefficiently. That's true. Um, they can play around it. They can change their their play based on the fact that there's a fireworks on the board. I see. Um, by keeping it concealed. Uh, he puts himself in a position where Chalky might play right into Fire War X. So my thought process is, you know, when you know you're up in against an aggressive deck, development is the most important thing to to have. It is, if you have other plays to develop next turn that's as true. well. That's true. Um, life gain is also important if you're playing against aggro decks. Yep, that's and true. In which point... Um, Weaving in an armor up every turn is also important, especially since he didn't have a play next turn, holding on to the Fire War Axe. I definitely agree with. Oh, it's going to be Imps Galore. That's right, man. Double Armor Double Smith. Double Armor Smith. Boom. Just 2x. Wow. Very surprising that he goes to the Imp. Well, I mean, either way, he's like putting in. Yeah. Like, he's, right. if he attacks both of these into the Imp Gang boss to kill it, he's. Pretty much putting the same amount of power on board. That's true. As he, as he just took off, so this way he removes power from the board. Uh, it also um, decreases the effectiveness of Defender of Argus, mm -hmm. um, which, lo and behold, Chalky just happens to have. Very fortuitous situation for, for Chalky, obviously. But I don't think GCT Turth is in, uh, you know, that bad of a situation, to be honest. Um, do we go for a brawl here, bud? I think we do. Wow. Because yeah. that's a considerable amount of clear up. Like, you're getting so much value. I love that he pinged yeah. that just to add an extra token there. Make it more likely for a 1-1 one -one to live. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. It's the most likely outcome. Okay. Ooh. Simple tap and throws out a low thread. Uh You can see, like, as you were talking about, it's not yet capped out by any means because there's a lot in the hand so far. Turf is in a wow. great spot. I mean, he's got Dr. He just Boom. boomed, yeah. He's got Shield Block for health gain. He's got Big Game Hunter in case, like, some crazy Boom or Mount Gannis comes out. Baron get in to clean up the little stuff. And he's effectively only taking two damage. Against an aggressive wow, zoo right. the whole game. You're right. And there's two arcing golems out at this point. Yeah. I mean, uh, this, which... this deck from Chalky is just super, super duper aggressive. Yeah. A lot of face. <laughs> and in reality, I mean, if a creature survives, let's count up this damage here next turn. Okay. So, oh, not doesn't even need a creature to survive. So from hand, next turn, Chalky has... Um, Six damage, or eight damage for six mana from Arcane Golems. Mm -hmm. um, for seven mana, it would be 12 with power overwhelming. Yep. And then with Dark Bomb, be another 15 theory. damage. That's crazy. A double brawl. All right. That is an interesting addition there. Um, nevertheless, I mean, this looks really, really strong. Oh. And he can't play his big game hunter. Yep, that's that stinks. Well, he could. He <laughs> just gets rid of his boom. That's awkward. <laughs> awkward. <laughs> They're just like, but I really wanted to play that <laughs> big know. game hunter. It's like, uh, four two yeah. better than seven five. No, let's pass. All right, so he's counting it up. He's like, no, not content. Yeah. I'm going to just throw down more stuff. Um, so wait. It's for sure 15? 4, 4, 4, Well, 12, the maximum 15, amount of damage he could have done. 19. It's 19 damage. Well, he wouldn't have had mana oh, for all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're it's right. 19 damage total. Yeah. That's if he doesn't That's discard he something important with his soul fire. Um, no, you can save the soul fire for last. Well, not anymore. If he had 10 mana and didn't draw a card this turn. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but, true. I mean, there's there's still potential for him to come out on top of this matchup. Yep. It's not terribly likely. Dark Bomb to the face. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, next damage. 
16. Oh, man. 16 from hand. So he needs uh, to draw into another power overwhelming, which would be 20, and then have two, two, two damage survive on the board. Um, wow. If he goes face here, uh -oh. is he dead? Uh oh. Okay. Ooh. Okay, wow. That and was scary. Uh, Power Overwhelming wins the game. Does that do it? Wait. Four, 16, 16 17, 18, 19, 20. He's one oh damage off. Oh, my God. No way. I think he still has to go for it, though. Uh, no, he can't. Why? He, he, well, he's got to put one damage into this Dr. Boom and then put him at two. Oh, yeah. Holy God. Mm -hmm. Can't tap because wouldn't have enough mana. Wait, why does he have to put one damage in Dr. Boom? Because it's like... Why not? <laughs> it's got one health. Yeah, I guess so. You're right. Because you're Grom right. anything wins him <laughs> the game. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. He's going for it. Oh, uh, well, he's not, he's not going to do that. He's going to save the Hellfire in his hand, so... Get in there and fight, maggot! All righty. So he's going to be a little sneaky sneakster. Save yeah. all of it, make it look like, oh, I'm really struggling. And then, of course, uh, he doesn't want to be susceptible to a second brawl, which would be crazy. Who runs second brawl, right? <laughs> Nobody. Wow. Oh, that no. <laughs> the sludge. Oh, no, he's out. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He still gains seven health, though. He's up to 21. But is that going to be enough now? I don't think so. All right. So he's got six. Six so he's on the field. 12 from hand. 12 from hand. Oh, okay. 18 total. Yeah. I just don't think so. If he taps into a power overwhelming, he wins. Because he'll still have enough mana for everything. Yeah. Um, wait, if, yeah, if he taps into power overwhelming, he'll have it, six on the board. Is that the only 12 card? 12 from hand. So it'd be 22. Does he put Doomguard in? Uh, second Soul oh, Fire. It doesn't matter. But it'd be a 50 50. That's not it. Okay. So he knew we'd be in eggs. He still has to L. He has to push for damage for sure. Yeah. And he needs to get cards out there so, you know, he doesn't get hit face with rag. Yep. And I guess he just keeps Man, seven damage is so much. He's right now calculating because he has to realize like, okay, if I don't place my other arcane golem, does it uh will I still have enough damage out on the field? Given the Belcher will probably get rid of something. Mm. Interesting spot. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is so much damage, man. This is ridiculous. And to think that he's been on like a, a draw for lethal both these games, despite such a fantastic start. Whoa, that's risky. Yeah. Cool Taskmaster? No, it's Five, not lethal. No. I mean, it's potential lethal if Rag hits, but I yeah, don't... I... All right, so... So do you go for your Acolyte of Pain, Cruel Task, draw, uh, Brawl? No, 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 you can't do that. Well, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You do that, and then um, your Belcher goes into the zero two. 2 Because you need to clear this board, right? Like, you are scared of the board incredibly. There's no better way to clear it. Uh, and then you have to calculate. It's basically like a 50-50. Well, it's a little bit worse than that. It's 44% that you, one of your cards are going to stick. Eh, Baron Geddon is also a 50-50 to win the game. Straight up. Oh. So Wait. You, no. It, it's 33%. Uh, well, you'd, you'd kill the defender of Argus. Oh, you're right. And then you're right. the damage from, from Baron Geddon would trigger, so he'd be at 7. And there would only be two targets left on the board. To be yeah. honest, Baron Gittin seemed... Oh, the oh my lamp! god, no way! Oh my goodness, 17 damage. Oh my god, Se no way! 17 damage is impossible for Chalky to do. Oh my god. Oh no! That would have been... It would have been it. If it any, been it. <laughs> if any of his creatures had survived. Oh my god, no freaking way. This is 15 damage. 12, 15, and then, yeah. He needed a two-health two. creature to survive. The owl could have lived. That is it. The defender could have lived. Oh, my goodness. And well, then, now, yeah. And also, since the rag lived, 
That is ridiculous. Since the rag lived, it also put him at one, so we can't even tap into another answer. That was like a 29 percenter. This too. position right here, he could, if he wasn't at one health, he could um, tap into second power overwhelming, and that would still win in the game. But now he can't even tap. I mean, he can. Okay, so yeah, he's dead. He's I dead. Mean, he's yeah, dead. Yeah, but he's, nothing. He's. he's He's thinking, <laughs> is there a position where I cannot lose it? I can deny the board or something. And yes, he can deny the board with like Arcane Gloom, um, Power Overwhelming, Dark Bomb, but you're saying, can can you do one damage? Yeah. And he's just going to play out his hand, hope for the best, and then uh, hopefully with two cards next turn, he could be able to deal. Um, oh, no. You don't care, none. Um, that is GG, my friend. Baron Geddon. Later, bro. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. That's heartbreaking for Jackie. It is. It is. That brawl. Sometimes you just got to gamble, though, man. And who actually expects a second brawl? This is a spot where second brawl comes and wins the game. Yeah. There have been a lot of Control Warrior players that have been saying double brawl is probably uh, most effective right now with the popularity of Green Patriot Warrior Patron, yeah. and uh, Zoo Warlocks. But, um, I mean, that was literally the only outcome that lost Jackie the game. Yeah. Um, but GCT Turth is going to tie it up one apiece. Now, I do want to put it out there that some people are like, oh, wow, RNG. That's how this guy wins. But, I mean, 30% happens a lot of the times, you know? People got to realize. 30%, yeah. it, it's, it's a better odds of, you know, flipping coin twice and it coming up tails twice. So, well, there was that 30%. Yeah. What are you getting 30%? Four out of, uh, two out of five. Well, if Sludge Belcher had lived, he, would, two to five. he would have been able to tap into potential lethal. Wait, if Sludge Belcher lived. Like at the brawl outcome. Yeah. If uh, He had two minions out in the field, right? He had f five. Uh, his opponent had five. Yeah. Uh, he had two. He had two, had so it's two sevens, or two to five. Well, Sludge Belcher would have let him tap. Oh, oh, I see. So he could have tapped into another lethal. So that was the one that secured the game. Like yeah. he, he had enough mana to tap into power overwhelming and still win. Um, so it was super, super yeah. bad. But, I mean, GCT Turret played it well. Um, I mean, he put himself in the best position to win the game. That's right. That's the most important part. And yep. he's got to move on. Now, uh, Chucky still has to win with the Warlock deck that we just saw. Still has to win with that aggressive Rogue deck. And he's going to throw out oh. the Warlock deck. And he hasn't... He hasn't given up all of his stuff yet. I mean, GCT Turrets can kind of guess based off of what he's seen that it is super aggro. Yep. But Chucky didn't give up the soul of fight. that, though, GCT Turth, he had, none of his decks have been shown, whereas Chucky, he had another series that he had to play. Yep. That's so if Turth is, like, really checking out the stream and making sure he was on top of everything, he has a good idea what's inside of, uh, of Chucky's deck. So I would actually say that there is no element of surprise. Yeah. Oh, it's handlock. Oh, baby, baby. All right. Hellfire. So, this, I don't even know if Hellfire would be that good because Chucky has a lot of damage from hand. He's got double soul fire and dark bombs in his deck. All right. This All right. is a pretty decent star for GCT turret. He's got dark bomb to deal so. with uh, like pesky knife jugglers. But not only that, I mean, we're going to go into the god mode cam where we can see both. And seeing that there's an Urubian egg and then two imp gang bosses, you're feeling so good. A lot of times the way you deal with um, with handlock in the early stages, you just put so much pressure on by like turn four. If I don't clear the board, I'm basically dead. Yeah. Uh, or if I don't have like molten giants and, and uh, even, walls. Even with molten giants and walls, you just don't have enough to put it up. Yeah, like if you don't have your molten giants, uh, but mountain giants, like... They, they become useless because you need a turn to get them out, and then you need a turn to actually taunt them up. But because there hasn't been enough damage to be pressed, you can actually throw out your Azure Drake, or, I'm sorry, your Twilight Dra Drake, and uh, you're looking in not a bad situation, although that's a great taunt up right there. Yeah. What to do from here? Oh, anti Cubot. Sludge Belcher and anti Cubot are both fantastic cards yep. for this matchup. He also has Jaraxxus. Uh, so... I think GT, GCT Turret is in a fantastic position right now. Chucky, I don't think, has enough spell burn to get through how much effective life gain Turret is going to have this game. 
So, GCT Turret, I told the story before, uh, but there might be some people who haven't seen him play, because he played in the Legendary Series in Week 1, which was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But GCT Turret sounds like a weird name. People wonder, uh, where does GCT come from? Turret is his first name. Um, GCT stands for Giga Champion Turret. Uh, when he, when Turret was younger, he had a group of friends uh, that liked to play video games together, and they called their clan or the group Giga. And it was a unanimous uh, opinion that everybody thought Turth was the best player. So that's why they called him the champion. So I Giga see. Champion Turth Turth is uh, what his name means. <laughs> There's a little bit of redundant with the Turth, but... By the way, this is a Dream Hellfire. There are so many things that will not proc here. Yeah, the, uh, the all the for, for Chalky, you mean. Yeah. Like the Dream defensive board yes. against Hellfire. No, yeah. this Turth is the Warlock. Turth is the handlock. Oh, I'm sorry, the handlock. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's what I meant. So, in I order for him to both them are well I mean, he can dark bomb and hellfire and only be left with uh, a 4-4, four -four, which is like best case scenario. Yeah. But is he dead? 12 health. He's dead! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Well, hello there. Well, never mind. Maybe not the dream. Yeah. He doesn't even Wait. need the dark bomb. Oh, yeah. Got t 12 damage just with the soul fire. And uh, that game went a lot quicker than that the last did. one. A little bit more smooth for Chalky. Man, kind of crazy. That was the dream scenario for Handlock. Well, I mean, maybe not necessarily the dream, but he had... He had a lot of the components to yeah. be able to, you know, stay. Uh, in general, like, we've always talked about this. The Handlock has trouble with the really, really yeah. early fast pushing. Against Hunter, it's just like a nightmare situation mm -hmm. because they always start to get rolling at turn four, turn five. Uh, but I felt like, you know, that was the best possible situation, and it still comes up pretty close. Still yeah. comes up pretty close. So Chalky has to find a win with Rogue. Now, this was the deck that was sort of a liability for Chalky in the first matchup that he played of the day. Uh, it took him three tries. He lost two matches and only won one with this Rogue deck. Uh, he seemed to have inconsistent starts. Uh, even the last one that he had, it was tough for him to piece it together. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's got two opportunities to do so. He uh, has to either beat the Priest or the Warlock. And I'm not sure how it's going to work out. Handlock traditionally has a pretty good matchup against Rogue. The fast Rogue, though, might be a little bit too fast for Handlocks to handle. It's true. Priest um, might be in the same boat. This deck might be a little too fast for Priest to handle. So, Although there are two Senjins in here. That's true. Uh, he is missing, like... Um, what is he missing? I guess that would be annoying. The 283 drop. <laughs> oh, the perfect start. Holy Smite into double mind box. You can put your opponent at 18 health on turn three. I love it. How? <laughs> oh, man. And he only kept a smite? Yeah. Why are we casting this guy? I mean, Priest could technically. Priests have so much direct damage. You could, like, double mind blast, double Holy Smite into double Holy Fire. That's still only 24 damage. <laughs> okay, never mind. I take it back. I regret nothing. Okay. Well, um, this start for Chalky, not the greatest. He's not on the coin, so it's going to be tough for him to activate these SI agents. He's actually got both Shadow Steps in his hand, which will be good. As long as he can get to the point where he can actually utilize the Shadow Steps, have cards that are good. But... Gosh. Yeah, it does stink, man. Sap. Sap. Oh, yeah. What do you do here? Do you just sap this back? It sounds so wrong. To be honest, I think you just <laughs> hit the dagger to face and re-dagger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so definitely so. You throw out the SI agent here. He just heals up his injured blade master. Yeah. And and kills it for free. And yeah. Well, maybe not for free, well, but for two, two for, uh... for very low cost. So, uh, I mean, this this the rogue aggro deck is one that can afford to not have a board as much, just for for the sole fact that a lot of their burst damage is combos. Um, but this is looking kind of grim. <laughs> Whoa! This oh. is a huge bait from GCT Turret. It's a big tell. Yep. 
So he's basically saying like, hey, I have another power word shield. Yeah, now, or in light of the Naru. That's true. And uh, he's saying to himself like, oh, do I want to use this now or do I want to use it later and just heal up? Yeah, that is. You sneaky guy. <laughs> wow, Terrific. I love that, man. I love that. Yeah. Really clever. Yeah. You're just going to go for face and heal up. Go back to 30. Everything's yeah. good to go. It's like nothing ever happened. All wounds are mended. Still not anything that we can see that uh, that Chucky can really play here. This, okay, so this mind games here might force a sap out of Chucky. He might be thinking, well, if he hovered over... Um, yep. Yeah, if he hovered over Light of the Naru, I can't let this injured Blade Master get out of control. I need to sap it now. Um, and this sets him up later for opportunities where he can play cards like Stench and Shield Master to block damage. That's really smart by Turret. Are you going to steal that now? Would you consider stealing it? And now he's going to do it again. He's going to hover it over it and be like, hmm, should I do this or should I not? Wow. He's That's all in on so clever. All man. in on I the mind game. I love games. that. I love that. The only other player that I've seen do that in the Legendary series so far has been too wet. Thank who is also of the mind games. <laughs> Thank you. Um, finally has uh, something to actually start activating his SI. Yeah. But. Okay. Turth is like a cold-blooded killer. Oh, he's milling him. Oh, man. Two cards are going to go away. That yeah. Was... Well, Chucky's also going to mill himself. Yeah, unless... No. Nope, no unless. <laughs> no. Oh, wait, no, no, no. He's at nine cards. No, he's good. One, two, three, four, five. Unless yep. there's one hiding behind our rover light, which no, I don't no, think no, there no. is. Okay, he's at nine. He's at nine. All right, we're good. I should be used to this. I always have nine cards in my my hand. All right. He's debating whether or not he wants to shadow step his cold light oracle, and, and uh, he does. Keep it? Yeah. Uh, the reach is probably what you need against Freeze. Your the combos are great. Comboing... Ooh, Cabal Shadow Priest. I don't even know if that's even useful. But that very well could have been something that was quite useful. Yep. Um, he hovers over the same card, man. What? Well, he has the Cold Light. So he has to respect that and be like, okay, okay. Yeah, let's, yeah. Uh, let's play against <laughs> that. Okay, that makes sense. Cause it's not very often that I see a Holy Smite base on turn five. But he might just go Circle of Healing and then Mind Blast. <laughs> mind Blast. Aggro Oh, freeze. no, no, no. Probably not Mind Blast. Wild Pyromancer now that I see it. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. So that's fine. I like that play. Gets rid of three cards really quickly. And now if he goes and plays the Cold Light or, um, Oracle, yeah, it won't take any damage from that. Both shadow steps have been used. Unless he doesn't run gang ups, does he? No. I highly doubt it. <laughs> um, so. so got double cold blood, double cold blood, double eviscerate, double arcane golem. Um, does run wolf riders as well in this deck. Um, oh, deadly poison. Oh yeah, double loot hoarder as well. With a little bit of extra reach. This play gets punished heavily by Holy Nova if this is all he's going to do. Oh, this guy's toast. And, uh, well, GCT Turret just happens to have one of those fancy cards called Holy Nova. It's nice when you have 10 cards. Or yep. Not 10, but how many does he have? 10. Oh, you just have to. Oh, yeah, because the cold look. Wow. Well, unfortunate. Now, also, uh,. He may feel like he is safe enough and healthy enough to use Emperor Thor's hand here because with nine cards in your hand, that's like that's four and a half innervates that you're basically getting. It's like six mana five five. Give yourself four innervates and a coin. I'd play that card. I would play. I'd that play that card, card in a heartbeat. <laughs> Holy Nova's still going to be there next turn, and it's also going to be cheaper. It's going to be four. Yep. And he just goes to her face. Of course, he's sitting on thirty health too. And how likely is your opponent to deal? Let's see. It's right now on the board. It's eight, oh. ten. All right. So six, seven, eight. There's ten nine, damage. Ten. So okay. Two arcane gold. No. There's not enough. 
He needs some preps. 15, 16. To actually make this work. Because he needs the eviscerates. He needs the deadly poison. He's got 20 damage total, <clears> I believe. <throat> With the way his man is gated, I believe he has 20 total damage. Um... Now, he can deal with what's on the board here. And he can actually put quite a bit of pressure on the turret. But the question is, will he be able to close out the game with the amount of damage that he does have? He has double blade flurry. Uh, he's got an oil sit somewhere in his deck, so he can combo South Sea deck him with oil and blade flurry. I mean, this is so much damage in his hand. He has enough damage in his hand mm -hmm. to kill turret over a couple turns. But that's yeah. given turret doesn't do anything. Yeah. And it's a lot of burst stuff, too, that's, like, self-sufficient on one turn, right? Like, he doesn't need to prep for anything. Not actually, like, preparation, but, like, he needs to... Uh, he doesn't need to, like, have some card stick, and then he's able to actually activate them. Um, he's, yeah. They're instantly activated, which is really nice, just with some combos. Down to 20 health. And it's looking kind of grim. Light Bomb will be coming out, though, it looks like, and uh, followed by up by a... Injured Blade Master. Injured Blade Master. That's right. All right. So, is this enough? Let's see now. So he's sitting at eight. Uh, I don't think it's enough. Don't think so just yet. No, I can only do like twelve damage. Yeah. <laughs> he's getting there though. Just twelve with arcane golems and the um, the eviscerate. Of course, he does have the South Sea deckhands. <laughs> he could also yeah. double <laughs> South Sea deckhand. So you can do 13 damage yeah. with the hero power. Whoa! What? No. No. Uh, either way, he later on in the game, since uh, he, he has more mana now, he's going to be able to... Uh... So he has to agent here then. Right? He has to. How does he not? I think the question is whether or not he trades or puts his damage to face. He's trying to piece out, piece together his damage. He wants to make sure he has as much what? burst as possible. So he has 12 damage from hand with for eight mana with just double arcane golem. I like this. One. Oh wow, yeah. interesting. This guy's Very cool. cool. Yep. All right. All right. So yeah, he can do 12 damage next turn just from hand alone. Azure Drake, Holy oh Nova. Oh my gosh. A that's, brutal. That's a great turn. Job's done. That is a great turn. Job's done. And he's sitting at 17 health. Pretty comfortably away from that. Has to Azure Drake here. Needs to start piecing together more components. That oh. is going to help a lot. So that right there is 16 damage. I think he just um, he just powers up. Oh, does he go? No. I'm sorry. He goes to the Eviscerate right now. And uh, it takes advantage of that spell power. So puts him he, down to 12. Okay, so if he eviscerates face and attacks face with dagger, puts him at 11. Yep. And he has 12 damage next turn, 13 with the dagger hit. So he actually, if all GCT Turth does is heal, Jockey has lethal next turn. Oh, never mind. He oh my god, he killed himself. Oh my god. <laughs> no! no! Oh, yes! Oh, oh no. my god! No! <laughs> How could you expect that? <laughs> and Turth, that's the biggest smile oh, I've ever seen Turth give. And it's not even so a smile. That's so juicy, man. That's what you live for, though. Yeah. When you're up against an aggro deck and you're like, oh, let me just do 10 points of damage well, with he my was, mind blast. He was dead no matter what. Yeah. He had to eviscerate or yeah, clear yeah, off the did. Azure Drake. Yeah, he had to eviscerate the yeah, Azure Drake. Yeah, but you, you, you can't throw that much damage in. All right, well... Turret ties it up, so we're going to game five. That's right, man. Very exciting. I, I like this. I, I can clearly see uh, who I'm rooting for in this series. I don't know who, if you would know, but, you know, I honestly can't. I'm not a big fan of the aggro decks. Oh, okay. I'm just, um, they feel very, I mean, well, don't get me wrong. I think there's a lot of skill that goes into. Chucky makes them an art form. Um, but I think. The skill ceiling is lower for aggro decks than for, you know, the more controlled decks. Arguable. It is arguable. Mm -hmm. It definitely is. All right. Well, this deck is going to be really tough for Chuck to get through. He's got his rogue left, and he's got to get through handlock. Uh, now, of course, rogue versus handlock has traditionally been a rough matchup for rogue. But, like I said, this the fast deck might be a little bit too much for the handlock to handle. Uh, this deck is fast, but it's also not that fast um 
the first creature that it usually plays is like SI Agent. Which the really fast rogue decks, like the backspace rogue that we saw um, a few months ago, ran like Argent Squire to be able to get big turns with Cold Blood out early on in the game to put on pressure. But it doesn't look like Chucky does that with this rogue deck. Looks like it's just like very like maximum damage potential um, tuned. What I like too is that he's able to control the amount of damage that he puts out. Like a lot of these aggro decks aren't capable of doing that. And against something like Handlock, very important. But, you know, already we, we see a problem. Mountain Giant is very, very big, I think, in this early game stage for Handlock. Um, just because we saw from last game, you talked about it, the SI agent. Um, it just, it's generally the first card that pops out, although not always, but... I think know, Mountain it's... Giant's way too slow. You think so? Yeah, he got rid of it. Wow, oh, yeah, you're right. You. It's way too slow. I mean, it's Super nice vulnerable to pick up to sap. two Azure Drakes. That's right, it is vulnerable to sap. That's yeah. to pick up two Azure Drakes, but it's even nicer to pick up an Ooze. Ooze can stop a lot of momentum Ooh. from weapon classes, especially yeah, Rogue. Okay, just taps in. He has to coin Azure Drake next turn. Tippity tap, tip tap, tap. That's what I was thinking. Yep. Read your mind. He took the words out of my mouth. Twilight Drake makes sense, and this is nice. He can actually go for Twilight Drake next turn, clear up the board a little bit, and then directly after that, he can go for his Mountain Giant. Or well, Sludge Belcher. Or Sludge Belcher, either way. Um, I like uh, the Mountain Giant a little bit better because... You know, realistically, you want to be sitting at that, like, 16 health, and then you start taunting up. 16 to 20, I would say, overall. And by the time you have your two Twilights out, your two Twilight Drakes, you have your Mountain Giant out, you're going to be approximately around that phase, uh, depending on how aggressive they are. And it looks like he's actually ramping up the aggression here very yeah. quickly. You have to sort of go all in with this matchup. It makes sense. You it can't afford to play around cards like Hellfire. You can't afford to play around AoEs. Because you don't... Gigi's just like, well, I know. I'm going to play he's this ready. card. He's ready. He doesn't care. Yeah. Oh, I love this silence, too. Just a little bit more denial. Yeah. Gets rid of the South Sea deckhand. I love that. Love that. People might consider getting rid of that loot hoarder. Of course, you don't want to get rid of that because it gives your opponent another card. Gives them more options to actually do stuff. You don't want your opponent doing stuff. Mm -mm. All right. Um, kind of an interesting spot here. Uh, what I do like, by the way, is the fact that there are multiple minions out for this handlock. So, uh, the double defender of Argus enables you to very clearly play around sap. Yeah. But what do we do here if we are Chucky? Mm. I don't know what the clear solution is. I feel like we're behind slightly, but our opponent is down uh, at least 13 if we go full face. You need the sap to be able to push through with our king all. Like, that's... Yeah. I think he just needs to dagger up Goblin Honor Barber here. Maybe Whoa. trade in one loot hoarder to, to check the draw. Okay. Uh, it's not the worst. Yeah. Get rid of the owl. Also allows him to combo something later on. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, he's just going to get rid of the owl naturally. Yeah, he doesn't want to open up a giant plus uh, taunt anything. Mm -hmm. well, I like this. Locked. I like this a lot. All right, so Chucky needs to start piecing together large amounts of damage over the next couple turns. Because this is where the handlock is going to start to um, stabilize here. All right, so in his hand at the moment, he only has a seven damage, uh, like a maximum of eight damage if he use, utilizes Blade Flurry. Or, I mean, I guess it could be nine damage if he keeps a hold of the weapon buff here. Yeah. But the two damage dagger is not that effective against <laughs> no. Handlock in a Blade Flurry, usually. Mm, definitely <laughs> not. Yeah, this is um, not a great spot for, for Chucky, man. And... Really, the world is up for um, for Tirith, as he's most likely just going to start dropping down some taunts, oh, man. making sure he's... Oh, no, he's going for the Mountain Giant. Okay. 
He could also consider siphon souling. It's not the worst. Azure Drake's like the biggest creature he's ever going to see in this deck, which is pretty funny. Oh, oh double sap. That's very helpful, actually. Yep. Very, very helpful. Yeah. I think he has to... <coughs> he has to sap Wolf Rider. Sap Wolf Rider, and dagger up. Dagger up. I don't know. So it seems weird sapping a target that... Sapping the Mountain Giant actually doesn't prevent much except for removing damage off your own board. That's true. Um, you you want to sap the targets that have taunt because that's going to be the limiting factor. Uh, but he realizes that he's sort of on a clock right now. Yeah, he needs to maintain his minions as best as possible. Yeah. He's protecting them. And now... Yep, it oh, has does he have... Oh, he has 5, 6, 10 damage with the Arcane Golem. 11 damage with Blade Flurry. He's actually on a draw to win the game. Is that it? Uh, that is it? Oh my oh god. Oh my goodness. No way. Wow. Turth, he's sad. Wow, he's that sad. is brutal. And Chucky. Chucky. Look at that. He takes a sip. He's like, no big deal. Easy game, easy day. He took off the label of his whatever beverage that is. But we all know Chucky. We know exactly what that is. Chucky, first player of the day. Moving on to the Group B Finals. Big Sock Chuck. Coming up big. Yep. Very nicely done overall. I mean, uh, you know, I was talking about how, like, I think... Um, so in these, situ in these situations where it's just full-out aggro versus, you know, very, very, very controlly type of deck, yeah. I feel like this is where we get to see aggro shine a lot because, again, you, you have this line in the sand where you're trying to judge what you play around and what you don't. And I feel like being able to be very accurate with that is hard to do. And um, time and time again, I see these aggro decks. I'm like, oh, you should be losing here. You, you punish poor draws. Yes. A lot. So much more. So much more. Uh, you, there's also a lot more room for error when you're playing uh, slower decks. And GCT Turret, I mean, that's just his style. I mean, both these guys, you can tell how different their styles are. Uh, Chalky has always sort of been the king of aggro. Um, and he, he plays it about as best as you can play. You See, even the games that he lost, he always put himself in a position to draw for a win. Yeah. Uh, which is something you have to do. And I mean, aggro decks in general, usually what you want to do is kill your opponent like one turn before they kill you. Like That's just how aggro works. And even though the games are close, if you don't win, then the game wasn't really close sure. in general. Sure. So, um, And of course, GCC Turret, since the beginning, since we saw him last season, he still loved to play that control. Definitely so. A uh, tough loss for him as he was seeded into this tournament, but he's going to have to try again in the open qualifiers if he wants a chance to make it he to can't. the finals. Oh, he can't? No, he's from India. Oh, yeah, you're right. So uh, that was GCT Tour's last oh, man. chance to make it to that finals. $25,000 prize pool. Chucky is going to be up for that. Of course, that $25,000 would not be possible without our wonderful sponsors, Playtronics and Gigabyte, uh, have joined us for Season 2 to help us out with... Uh, all the exciting things that we have planned for the LAN Finals. Uh, it's a 16-player LAN, and we're going to fly all 16 players out, or drive them out, depending on how close they are, to our studios in Burbank, California. And uh, that wouldn't be possible to get these players here and have a lot of fun without those guys. So support what we do here at the Legendary Series by going to those links you just saw on your screen. Uh, head over to LegendarySeries.com and maybe purchasing some Plantronics headsets, some Gigabyte motherboards, getting yourself some sponsor gear. And at the very least, just tweet at them, thank them, and also tweet at us. Stay in the conversation at ESL Hearthstone, hashtag HLS. And of course, as always, we're doing some giveaways today. You can head over to ESL.gg slash Redemption Series. We're giving away Plantronics headsets as well as some classic packs. So go to that website, follow the instructions on the screen, and enter in to that raffle. You can also spam exclamation mark raffle or exclamation mark packs and channel. Doesn't do anything, but it's definitely amusing. Our next matchup is going to be the semifinal between Lead Paint and Strife Crow. That should be a good one, man. I think so. I yeah. think so. I mean, Strife Crow is always very exciting. Lead Paint has proven himself over the course of uh, well, a while now. Yeah, indeed. And of course, uh, we saw yesterday that it was a uh, a double invite finals. Four of the five players that have qualified for the the LAN have been players that originally started out as invites. And if Strife Crow makes it, that trend is going to continue. But Lead Paint is looking to change that. Lead Paint versus Strive Crow, the second semifinal of Group B, will return right after this.